Uh, good morning, dear colleagues, dear participants of the re regionalization strategy session for Eurasia and uh, Southwest Asia. Uh, I would like to ask uh, online participants of this session to turn on their uh, cameras and uh, turn on the microphones when uh, they will be speaking. I hope uh, the Russian interpretation to the YouTube channel is also uh, going well. So let me welcome you all at the parallel session devoted to regionalization in Eurasia and Southwest Asia. Colleagues from Africa, South America and North America had the similar sessions yesterday and colleagues from Europe and uh, Asia Pacific are having their regionalization sessions at this time. Uh, the purpose of this regionalization strategy sessions are to bring together signatory cities uh, from the same region in order to define together their strategy and leadership plan for next two years. So here we would like to learn about the opportunities and challenges that each city uh, has and uh, to come up with a general leadership plan, general strategy for uh, our region. Um, this afternoon we'll have a session titled uh, State of the Pact uh, and Regionalization Strategies where the result of these discussions will be presented for all six um, regions. So today with us uh, here are Mr. Oleg Kartunov, head of uh, the city of Chibaksare. Uh, Ms. Victoria Mazgachova, Deputy Mayor uh, of Bishkek. Ms. Olga Ursu, Head of uh, Mayor's Office and Advisor to Mayor of uh, Kishinev, uh, Moldova. Uh, Mr. With me here, Vyacheslav Manuilov, Head of the International Relations Department uh, of uh, Foreign Economic and International Relations of the City of Moscow. Deputy, Deputy Head, right. Uh, uh, online, uh, we have uh, Ethan Ben Ami from the city of Tel Aviv, who is the director of environmental authorities. Uh, Ms. Uh, Undurama Rensent Hunt, uh, head of the food production department of the Food and Agriculture Agency of the city of Ulaanbaatar. And Dr. Mazim uh, Kumsih uh, from the city of uh, Vifliyem. Uh, thank you very much uh, to you all for being with us. I would like to propose to organize our session in the following way. Uh, first, we'll uh, give the floor to the representatives of uh, our cities uh, from our region uh, who would like to deliver their greetings and uh, to make presentations. Then I would like to briefly uh, present the leadership plan of uh, Eurasia and Southwest Asia that we have prepared together with the city of Tel Aviv uh, and uh, the Milan Pact Secretariat. So just to remind you, uh, for the uh, Eurasia and Southwest Asia, we have uh, two cities which are members of the steering committee of Milan Pact, and uh, these are the city of Kazan and set city of Tel Aviv. So, and at the end, I would like to uh, hold a round table discussion to modify the leadership plan that we have uh, prepared and have proposed, uh, taking into account your comments and suggestions. And also we'll have a representative of uh, Food Trails uh, project, uh, Alice, who also will deliver us a short 10 minutes uh, presentation explaining what the, this project is about and uh, we'll ask you to fill out a short questionnaire. Okay, so, uh, so first uh, I would like to give the floor to the representative of the city of Moscow, Vyacheslav Manuilov, uh, he's, uh, since he's uh, on site with us. And uh, so he will tell us about the experience of the city of Moscow. Uh, please, the floor is yours. <clears throat> uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear participants of our roundtable, uh, my name is Manuel Fischlaff and I'm a deputy uh, head of the Department for External Economic and International Relations of Moscow. Uh, I would like to thank you for giving a floor to Moscow. I'm uh, really happy to be here and I'm happy to present to you uh, the recent state of the implementation of uh, Milan Urban uh, Food Policy uh, Pact Action Plan. Uh, so can you please turn on the presentation? Uh, so first of all, um, uh, I would like uh, uh, to give you a couple to tell you a couple of words about Moscow. Uh, so Moscow uh, 
uh, one of the uh, largest uh, cities in the world uh, uh, with about 15 million residents. Um, uh, it is a major political, economic, uh, cultural and scientific center of, uh, R uh, of Russia and Eastern Europe. Uh, we have um, a stable and no debt city budget which is near 42 billion US dollars. Uh, so I can tell you that uh, Moscow is a city that never sleeps. The endless flow of festivals, concerts, exhibitions, shows and events challenges everyone to keep up with the rhythm of the big city. Uh, so I can tell you that Moscow uh, <clears throat> Uh, was accomplished in various fields from transport to heritage restoration uh, and we were awarded prestigious uh, Russian and uh, international prizes. Moscow is one of the largest urban economies in the world with GDP uh, more than uh, 270 billion US dollars and we are also in the top 20 largest consumer markets in the world. <coughs> uh, in the last 10 years, Moscow has achieved a breakthrough improvement of urban environment and transport infrastructure. We have created about uh, 400 kilometers of new pedestrian zones, over 380 renovated streets, and uh, more than 800 kilometers of bike paths and lanes. Uh, we pay extremely high attention to the development of public transportation and stable delivery of food and products to any part of our city. I can tell you that even at a pandemic peak, we never had deficit of food and life products. Uh, understanding that major transportation challenges of Moscow-sized megapolis can be solved uh, only by developing of public transportation, we concentrated on expanding of the city railway system. Uh, in 10 years, we have doubled the length of the metro lines in Moscow and have built new 86 metro stations. Uh, apart from that, apart from that uh, we invested a lot in building of more than 800 kilometers of new roads, dozens of bridges and tunnels. We have introduced an intellectual transportation system that totally reimagined the ground public transportation and all of that reduced traffic accidents by 60% and increased an average traffic speed by 20%. Uh, <clears throat> Moscow is a green city. I can tell you that more than 50% of Moscow territory is covered by parks, boulevards and green spaces. That makes uh, the capital of Russian Federation one of the greenest capitals in the world. Uh, so I can tell you that uh, we are the only city in Russia that discloses the data about air quality in the city to the C40 network. Following our commitments uh, in this C40 network, Moscow had reduced CO2 emissions by 10 times. Uh, I can tell you that uh, Moscow is progressively moving to electric-driven buses. Uh, we completely stopped the procurement procedures of buses with internal combustion engine, uh, and now we have uh, nearly 1,000 electric buses, and Moscow is number one in Europe uh, uh, in this field. Uh, sharing economy is also contributing um, uh, <clears throat> to the reduction of emission levels. We have pioneered in car sharing. Uh, we have, uh, so I think, uh, second biggest fleet in the world with uh, uh, 30,000 cars available. Uh, we are also on, um, uh, <clears throat> we also have bike sharing and electric uh, kick scooter sharing. Uh, in order to ensure sustainable city development, including food policy framework, it is important uh, to, implement, to implement smart city solutions. Uh, Moscow was uh, rewarded by the United Nations as the best city to implement smart city tools. Uh, a couple of words about, educations, uh, about education. Uh, Two million people use Moscow Electronic School every day. So it helps not only to plan, work and collaborate for teachers, pupils and parents, but also to take action within the urban food policy framework. It helps to plan the amount of food needed at the school and universities every day and can help to reorient school feeding programs to more healthy diet. Uh, we also introduced a smart city in healthcare. Uh, uh, now we have a big data-driven electronic health healthcare system that helps not only to cure but also to prevent non-communicable diseases associated with poor diets and obesity. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, tourism. Uh, <clears throat> one second. Uh, so um, uh, I don't want to take uh, uh, a lot of time, and uh, so <clears throat> uh, more information uh, about uh, uh, the implementation of uh, Milan uh, Food Action Plan. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Moscow ha uh, have achieved uh, a lot uh, in the implementation of the Milan Urban Food Policy Action Plan uh, since 2015. Uh, the food system of the Russian capital is sustainable, inclusive, resilient, safe, and divert. Uh, I can tell you that uh, more than 80% uh, of food products in Moscow are manufactured in Russia. Uh, they come to the city from 75 regions of Russian Federation, and the city needs for milk, sugar, sunflower oil, and tax is covered by the domestic producers. Uh, we have created the most tr uh, powerful trading system in Russia. Uh, it is represented by 20,000 stores, uh, 21,000 cafes and restaurants, 22 uh, big agricultural markets, uh, and more than 150 spaces uh, for uh, fairs. Uh, also, we have uh, the biggest in Eurasia food cluster. Uh, but I can tell you that city is also a huge market for foreign food producers from more than 100 countries. Uh, <clears throat> agglomeration uh, has an updated system of food processing and food production uh, with big foreign direct investments. We also consider that every resident of the capital of the big city should be able to get to the nearest grocery store in five to seven minutes. Therefore, the trade availability ratio in the capital should strive for 100%. Nowadays in Moscow, it's about 97. <clears throat> uh, I can tell you that uh, Moscow is a uh, big uh, agglomeration cluster. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had uh, a nomination of Michelin restaurants, uh, and now uh, we have more than 50 Moscow restaurants in Michelin Guide. Uh, so. Uh, uh, we were really lucky to have restaurants with two Michelin stars, and uh, uh, I hope uh, all of you can soon visit Moscow and uh, feel the gastronomy uh, and feel uh, <clears throat> so the good vibe of Moscow. Uh, I can tell you also that uh, Moscow is the world leader uh, in the speed of adoption um, by its population of new and advanced trade formats. Uh, we develop a dark store format, uh, and uh, it is a new, extremely popular uh, format of a grocery store. This is a completely new retail format with online ordering. Uh, a quick collection of the order is possible due to a limited range of products and innovative approaches to warehouse solutions and product display. The consumer receives uh, the order within uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So this business model uh, is showing promising results. The quantity of such shops in Moscow has increased to more than 300% in the last two years. Uh, I can tell you that um, we are expanding to foreign markets. Uh, the service has already been uh, launched in Tel Aviv, London, and Paris under the Yango Deli brand. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Moscow is devoted to continue the implementation of the recommendations uh, of the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact. We are looking forward to sharing our best experience with other cities of the pact, as well as studying the best practices of sustainable food chain development. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your attention. Uh, we are ready to work further uh, in the Milan Pact. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vyacheslav. <clears throat> uh, very well organized and uh, interesting presentation. Thanks a lot. Uh, next, I would like to give the floor to Eitan uh, Benami, who is uh, uh, Director of Environmental Authorities of the City of Tel Aviv. Uh, as I have mentioned before, the City of Tel Aviv is one of the steering committee members. And uh, at the previous term, uh, City of Tel Aviv used to be a coordinator of the steering committee of the Milan Pact. And back in 2018, uh, the city of Tel Aviv have, has hosted the first uh, global forum uh, in Eurasia and Southwest Asia. 
So we would be very interested to hear from the city of Tel Aviv and uh, to learn your experience. Eitan, please. Uh. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everybody. A very impressive uh, presentation by uh, Moscow. Uh, maybe we should go and learn some things from there. Uh, here in Tel Aviv, we're very committed to all the goals and the mission of the Milan PAC. And uh, we're working uh, uh, for several years now uh, on uh, almost every uh, field of the interest of the PAC, uh, hosting the uh, national forum here was a big boost to uh, the program. And uh, right now we are working all the way from nursery uh, to old age uh, uh, people. Uh, uh, supplying uh, different programs uh, to the parents. Uh, also have a couple thousands of them that just have newborns on uh, WhatsApp groups that they have 24-7 uh, uh, nutrition and diet people, you know, for them to help them uh, uh, nurse the little ones and uh, grow with them. Uh, and now we are... Uh, entering into the area of uh, waste food and we have uh, prepared the program that already finished the pilot program uh, to go into uh, uh, household families and teach them how to save food, save money, cook better and uh, reduce uh, food waste. Uh, we're trying to increase the relationship with the other Israeli cities that are part of the pack and they will be very happy to strengthen the relationship with the other cities in the region uh, to learn from them and to be part of a professional group. I'm sure that if we uh, are to be more in touch with uh, Moscow, for example, from what we hear, there is a lot to do together and learn. Uh, same thing with other cities in the, uh, in the area. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, in 2022, uh, we will be able, uh, uh, with your help of uh, Kazan as the steering committee coordinator, uh, to establish such a professional group that uh, will be able to uh, meet from time to time, share information, uh, report about different programs and progress uh, that uh, they do, uh, so we can all benefit from that. Uh, these are the things from Tel Aviv, and uh, we're here uh, staying very committed to the program. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Aiden. Uh, we fully support uh, your proposition to strengthen the relationship between uh, cities of the region. And uh, it's our duty as uh, steering committee members to increase the activity of the cities in our region to uh, attract new cities. And uh, as you have uh, probably known, uh, it was decided that uh, the meeting and the global forum starting from uh, next forum it will be biannual and one year will be uh, devoted to dissemination to uh, sharing the practice maybe to regional forums to field visits and so on and so far so uh, and once in two years there will be a global forum so I think uh, we can use this uh, one year when there will be not global forum but uh, a year will be devoted to uh, dissemination of best practices. We can also use uh, this opportunity to exchange best practices in our region as well. Thank you. Uh, well, next, uh, I would like to give the floor to the deputy mayor of the city of Bishkek uh, from Kyrgyzstan, Ms. Victoria Mazgachova. Uh, the city of Bishkek has joined the Milan Pact uh, recently during the uh, first regional forum uh, titled uh, Healthy Cities and Healthy Nutrition for Children hosted by the city of Kazan in, uh, at the beginning of June of this year. So, uh, Ms. Victoria Mazgachov will deliver a short greeting, uh, so we'll uh, give the floor to you, please. Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Действительно, город Бишкек, он относительно молодой участник. Good morning, dear colleagues. Bishkek is new to this pact, but we are ready to support all the points envisaged in the pact, share our experience and learn from other cities. Now, given the COVID pandemic, of course, we have seen many changes in our activities. 
and we are learning to live under the new circumstances. Uh, the major element uh, here is ecological and economic safety and security. And our city is taking a few steps here, like providing eco-friendly food products to our people, which is very important. Our country has lots of manufacturers who produce eco-friendly products. We're always promoting them to keep our citizens uh, eating those food products. We organize agricultural fairs, which helps people buy eco-friendly products at a cheaper price. This is one of the elements and we're always monitoring what our people are eating. Uh, these products have to be available to everyone. The diets have to be balanced uh, because people have to have a specific number of calories and vitamins for to upkeep the health of our citizens. Uh, Ecology-wise, Moscow here shared some interesting info we have some also interesting info to share with you about that. Like last year, we did a lot of work in our city in terms of building cycling tracks, pedestrian tracks. We introduced, inaugurated more than five park zones uh, so where our people can go to breathe clean air, free of smog and free of smoke. Oh, we also focus on children's nutrition. We Healthy food for children is very important. We are promoting that across schools and kindergartens, including vulnerable groups from birth. We provide them free meal tickets, uh, meal, free meal tickets to families who need that. And uh, together with Tel Aviv, maybe we could share some experience here and some new technologies when it comes to that. As for schools and kindergartens, we also, our budget, city budget pays for uh, nutrition for children. And now we're working to reinforce the quality of nutrition and, its, and the availability thereof because we know that uh, children mostly eat um, at uh, educational institutions. So I'd like to thank you for allowing us to join this pack. And I reaffirm our readiness to cooperate further to implement this pact. Thank you very much. For thank you very much, Ms. Victoria Mazgachova. Uh, yes, uh, we, we are happy that Bishkek has joined the Milan Pact and uh, we hope that you will be active in uh, the events that will be uh, undertaken by the Milan Pact Secretariat and uh, by the steering committee. Thank you. Next, uh, I would like to give the floor to the Deputy Mayor, of, uh, Deputy Mayor for Economics, Finance and Investment of the City of Kishinev, Moldova. Uh, again, uh, the city of Kishinev is a new member city, new signatory city to the Milan Pact that has joined during the uh, regional forum that was uh, hosted in, uh, in Kazan. Uh, so uh, we would like, would be very interested to learn about the experience of uh, Kishinev and what uh, you are expecting from the membership of the Milan Pact. Please. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, dear organizers, participants of today's forum. Uh, I'm glad to be a part of today's meeting uh, as a municipality representative and contribute to the discussions and exchange of opinions uh, within this event. Uh, we thank you for such an opportunity and we thank, first of all, our friends from Kazan and Milan, uh, because with the support of them, we have joined this Milan Urban Food Policy Pact uh, this year, uh, which we uh, consider an important tool uh, for us in the process of developing local policies to support our objectives of uh, implementing uh, good practices and changes in this field. Uh, we appreciate the valuable information and the know-how we receive in this uh, PACT uh, framework, and we are open towards uh, strengthening the cooperation between uh, the cities uh, with you, uh, taking over, implementing uh, all the best practices and all your experience, uh, because we are uh, at the basis of this implementation, 
Well, we do not have such policies, so we are just uh, beginners and we are glad to uh, be a part of this uh, big family, let's say, for joining you and uh, uh, taking the experience. Uh, thank you for your attention, thank you once again, and we are eager to contribute growing uh, and learning alongside with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Olga Urso. Yes, and uh, we also hope to work closely with the city of Kishinev, and uh, we also, as a cities, we also consider the signing the sister city uh, agreement. So, hopefully, uh, we'll involve you in all activities that is Kazan involved internationally. Thank you. Uh, next, I would like to give the floor to uh, Dr. Mazim Gumsih from the city of Ifliem. Uh, Mr. Gumsih, if you are here, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just share the screen. Um, I hope everybody can see my screen. Um, <clears throat> we in the city of Bethlehem are, of course, at the crossroads of civilizations where humans migrated out of here. And also, this is the Fertile Crescent where humans first developed agriculture. So we have, for example, Jericho is one of the oldest inhabitant, inhabited towns on Earth, um, uh, where agriculture started about 12,000 years ago. Uh, our ancestors, the Canaanites, of course, developed these agricultural systems that are in harmony with nature. So we should uh, uh, mostly try to revive what they have done to agricultural uh, systems. We're also in a rich, uh, hot biodiversity zone where we need to protect this nature and, uh, and do agriculture that's in harmony with nature and in harmony with the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Uh, Bethlehem, of course, uh, as you know, is uh, situated just south of Jerusalem, but uh, now is uh, isolated by walls, apartheid walls and systems of, uh, that prevent us from having access to most of the agricultural land around Bethlehem. Bethlehem, Beit Jala and Beit Sahur are three towns. There are four, uh, to, uh, four villages immediately to the west of Bethlehem, Al Khadr, Al Walaja, Batir, and Hussain, and then two more villages, Wadi Fukin and Nahalin, that are agricultural communities. Uh, the blue, dark blue areas are Israeli colonies built on stolen Palestinian land, and uh, took the land of these villages so they don't have access to them. Um, the destruction of our land has started, of course, in 1948 but continues today with the uh, with diversion of water, for example, and desertification that impacts Bethlehem. Our own uh, studies of this uh, area and ability to revive agriculture is thus very, very limited because of the Israeli occupation. Yet we do try to do things, uh, for example, with farmers here in Bethlehem and increase our production with things like permaculture, aquaculture and other uh, services. What we try to do is uh, uh, food sovereignty. This is very, very hard. And even under uh, normal circumstances because of climate change and habitat destructions, it's very hard. When you compound that with colonial occupation, it becomes even more hard. So Bethlehem now uh, basically is forced to import a lot of its food uh, as a district from even Israeli producers um, because of the system that we have. Yet we do have uh, ways that we are trying to teach our children about nature and work with our children in Bethlehem. Uh, we are very lucky to have several institutions working on environmental and agricultural education uh, with, uh, with the children and with others. We have three environmental NGOs we have at least uh, three uh, agricultural uh, institutions uh, that are non-governmental, like Applied Research Institute in Jerusalem. Um, we have museums, uh, like this Museum of Ethnography that 
revives the agricultural heritage of Palestine and our Canaanitic ancestors. Uh, we have regular summer camps where we focus on agriculture for our students um, and recycling trash and so forth. Um, the problem is, uh, again, you know, our challenge is that uh, working with, on these issues, the economy uh, has about 35% unemployment. Before the occupation in 1967, uh, more than 70% of the economy uh, here was agricultural economy. Now it's less than, in the Bethlehem district, less than 10% is agricultural economy. Uh, this is directly related to the occupation. Uh, but we continue. I object to all the political remarks. I, this is a professional forum dealing with yes, healthy food. Professional. And uh, I asked the chair. I asked the chair. Yeah, Doctor Komsich. This political statement. Thank you. Uh, Doctor Komsich, uh, please uh, do not make political I'm statements. I'm finishing. Just, one second. Uh, I'll stop yes, talking please. about politics anyway. I have two more slides. The National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan for the State of Palestine that we are working on now. Uh, will uh, highlight agriculture to Bethlehem and other areas. We have groups also like Palestine Action for the Planet that work on uh, making sure that our agriculture and our, uh, our biodiversity are interlinked uh, and, and that we protect the environment and that we work against climate change. Uh, if you need to contact us, uh, you can contact Carmen from uh, Bethlehem City, uh, Bethlehem City, or me from the Institute for Biodiversity and Sustainability, which is palestinenature.org. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Komsi. Uh, yeah, this, uh, the topic of this uh, I mean, session is the uh, food policy, nutrition, and uh, yes, uh, we should focus on that and uh, not to use uh, it as a political platform. But in any case, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for all presenters. And uh, <clears throat> last but not the least, I would like to give <laughs> the floor to the city of Kazan. So uh, we have a nice video prepared by the Department on Food and Social Nutrition of Kazan. And here, using this opportunity, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Uh, Rima Mohamedshina, who is the uh, Director General of the Department of Food and Social Nutrition of Kazan. Uh, thanks to her work and work of her team, we had this uh, nice project of the reforming school nutrition at the city of Kazan that uh, let us uh, win the Milan Pact Award back in 2019 and become the part of this uh, Milan Pack community because we had a practice, a good uh, experience that we could share with other cities uh, around the world. And uh, yeah, and uh, also with this project, we were invited to the uh, Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN. And this uh, project, Reforming the School Nutrition System in Kazan, is celebrating its 15-year uh, anniversary. And so we have the video that is uh, devoted to this 15-year uh, anniversary about the, of the Department of Food and Social Nutrition and its program. Uh, could you please turn on the video, please? Thank you. is a future first grader. Bogdan is already in the fifth grade. My boys. Can't see the movie. Every new day is a great journey for them. I get up a bit earlier to make breakfast for them. All of those eggs, porridge, cottage cheese, fresh vegetables, I spice up with a bit of love. My 
kids say it tastes better this way. Every day I cook them something they like. And then they run away to their kindergarten and school. We are partying for the whole day and I would like their independent day without me to be as interesting and delicious as possible in all meanings of this word. Today the Department of Food of Kazan is the largest company of public and social nutrition. We feed about 275 people a day in the city of Kazan and in 10 districts of the Republic of Tatarstan. 1,200 people work in this company. All the food passes a laboratory control. The laboratory makes 16,000 tests monthly. More than 900 tons of products were rejected only at the beginning of the school year. It means that these products were not put into the children's plates. Entering the school canteen, a child can see a dish cooked with love. The Kazan High School students have the opportunity of a free choice of dishes today. They can choose some meat, fish or chicken for the second course. Also, they can choose traditional cereals, pasta and vegetables for a side dish. But actually, not so many children choose vegetables. But we can see that school children, especially the girls, are interested in it and start choosing more and more vegetables. I really like that Tatarstan has such a serious and attentive attitude to this question. That children's nutrition is being targeted in Kazan. It's cool that they can offer some new dishes, new food, such as bolognese, bulgur. We do our best to make school menus dishes not only healthy and delicious, but trendy. For example, burritos. The children like it very much. This year we tried to offer them spaghetti, bolognese, and we've got fine response from children. In fact, it could be cool to make healthy fries, but it is still in a dream. Is it really offered at school? Steamed broccoli, carrots, cauliflower, selected vegetables, several kinds of cutlets, fish cutlets, meat cutlets. Everything that is in the diet is included in the menu. And together with the way this food is offered, it's beautifully served, it's included in the diet. And moreover, they are engaged in methods of forming eating behavior. We've been looking for an ideal recipe of a fish cutlet for a long time. Actually, children eat fish cutlets, but not all of them. For some reason, not everyone likes them. I don't know why. Just fish isn't very tasty. It lives in the rivers or lakes. There are a lot of microbes there. Probably this fish contains those microbes. It is slippery and has gills. <laughs> Fish cutlets are healthy and delicious, and they are also made of fish. I love fish very much. Today I've heard a lot about fish cutlets. This is generally some kind of the talk of the town. It's cool. The Department of Food told us they have tried to convince children and their parents that fish cutlets are cool and delicious. They made them in the shape of fish, added some cheese and breading in them. They choose different kinds of fish. It's touching and great. try to minimize sugar. New requirements of the sanitary regulations helped us a lot. According to the requirements, the amount of sugar was reduced by 30%. We do not exclude sugar, but we reduce its amount. Now it's too much of simple carbohydrates. The skew of this pyramid is upside down. That's why we reduce the amount of sugar. Also, we can make a burger. You can cook a cutlet at home, bake a corn bun and put fresh cucumbers and tomatoes. I was just wondering how our children eat and if they like the food, and I decided to assess it myself. I tried rice with vegetables, turkey and fish, it's very delicious. Just now I tried fish and beef pilaf. The fish is really very tasty. I can cook in such a way. 
I believe that I've come and had homemade food exactly. Buckwheat is in the first place at school. Rice porridge is in the second place. Corn porridge is in the third place. At school I like meat very much. Our chefs cook delicious food. They are great. They are doing their best. It seems that we haven't seen each other for ages, and it's the same every time. But I see that my kids are happy. New knowledge, new friends, and delicious food. Just a bit of love can totally change our life. Well, thank you very much. I hope you, <laughs> you have enjoyed the video. Thank you. Uh, please send us a link because uh, we're on the Zoom, didn't see it. Sure, okay. Well, uh, sorry for uh, the technical problems, but we'll send the video. Thank you. Uh, we'll send the link. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for uh, all presenters, all uh, participants. Uh, for their uh, greetings and for their presentations of their cities. Uh, now I would like to briefly describe the leadership plan that we, the draft of the leadership plan that we have came up with, uh, the city of Tel Aviv and uh, Milan Pact Secretariat. And of course, you are more than welcome to propose some suggestions to that uh, leadership plan. And of course, we will include them to the final version of this leadership plan that will be sent to the Milan Pact Secretariat. So Eurasia and Southwest Asia region is a diverse area with uh, different characteristics which are expressed in var various cultures, food consumption, food production and means of uh, transportation and different levels of food insecurity. From the desert of Middle East through the steeps of uh, Eurasia to tropical forests and mountains peaks in the Indian subcontinent, the different climates of the region uh, present us with the uh, changing challenges. In dealing with the above mentioned challenges, it is uh, possible to reach sub-regional resolution and promote solution much as the possible to the most common challenges. In line with the Milan Pact priorities, the main challenges for the next uh, few years for our region are the following. Ensuring the and enabling environment for effective uh, action and governance, ensuring sustainable diets and nutrition, increasing social and economic equity, promoting sustainable food production, ensuring sustainable food supply and distribution, and reducing food, food waste. Uh, special consideration should be given to children's diet and healthy nutrition. Uh, the focus on the children's diet could provide opportunities to tackle the challenges from the beginning, create a healthy diet culture, and reduce the need to deal with the consequences of unhealthy nutrition. And as uh, it was mentioned yes yesterday by the deputy mayor of Milan, Misan Scavuzzo, many cities, many uh, signatory cities uh, of the Milan Pact are working in the field of uh, food and nutrition for children. So many of them are providing food to kindergartens and schools. So this is a, is a very interesting area that we think, uh, as a city of Kazan, uh, we need to focus. So we are all welcome uh, to suggestions from other cities, which uh, areas you think is also important and should be put uh, in the leadership plan and strategy of our region. So please, uh, um, you're welcome to propose. Then there's a section considering the partnerships uh, that uh, our region can uh, create with the international organizations, uh, financial institutions, and so on and so far. At the moment, we have the uh, idea of uh, creating a link uh, with the uh, Bank Intesa San Paolo. Uh, we have uh, this, there is a so-called uh, fund uh, called Exploring Eurasia, which is uh, uh, based in uh, the city of Verona. And the city of Verona is a sister city of Kazan. And we, this year, we are celebrating um, the 10-year anniversary. And we, in this regard, we are very actively involved with uh, these uh, activities with the city, uh, bank in Intesa San Paolo. And we would like to uh, attract them also to our activities with the Milan Pact, since uh, Milan is the headquarter of the uh, Intesa San Paolo, at least the largest uh, office of Intesa San Paolo is uh, based in Milan. 
So if you have uh, propositions uh, uh, also from the food cities, uh, I think we can also put uh, in the list of partners, right? So we already collaborating and uh, so uh, food cities could be a partner of uh, Eurasian and Southwest Asian uh, region. So please, uh, we are welcoming any propositions from the cities, from the international organization that would like to be a partner with the, our region and uh, participate in our regional events. Uh, then uh, we have uh, listed the regional goals that we want to um, implement during the next uh, two years, till uh, spring uh, 2023, when the say, new steering committee will be elected, so, and the mandate of this uh, current steering committee. So we'd like to have 10 new memberships uh, in our region, and uh, this year, with the uh, first regional forum uh, in Eurasia, we have uh, five uh, new cities, uh, the city of Kishinev, city of uh, uh, Bishkek, uh, Nizhny Novgorod, Sab Samaria, and Chebaksari, and who have joined the Milan Pact. So the halfway is the, we have passed the halfway. But the thing is, that it's important not only to sign the uh, pact, but also actively involve, uh, get involved in all the activities that are um, initiated by the Milan Pact Secretariat. And uh, for the other cities, we plan to attract uh, cities from the countries and regions uh, that are not yet represented at the Milan Pact. So uh, it could be uh, cis countries or other countries from uh, uh, Eurasia and Southwest Asia. Uh, well, uh, during this uh, two years, we would like to have uh, at least two um, uh, regional forums uh, to organize. I think uh, city of Ifliem can also uh, be interested in organizing a regional forum, and uh, city of Moscow uh, is uh, willing to host the global forum. So uh, we would be glad to organize uh, regional and global forums uh, in our region. Uh, then webinars. Uh, we in the Leadership plan, we put about four webinars, so uh, two webinars per year. So maybe this year we may have one webinar by the end of the year or early next year, and uh, one more webinar in 2022, and maybe two webinars in, at the early uh, 2023. Uh, projects. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the city of Kazan uh, has uh, joined uh, this uh, project called uh, Barcelona Challenge. So we took the commitments uh, for the Barcelona Challenge for Good Food and uh, Climate. Uh, so we are the, among the list of core cities that are initiating this uh, challenge, uh, and this challenge will be presented today. So there on, in the afternoon, there will be an informative session for the Barcelona Challenge. So new cities will be uh, welcomed to the Barcelona Challenge, and I hope uh, cities from the Eurasia and Southwest Asia region will um, support this initiative uh, by the city of uh, Barcelona and uh, Milan Pact uh, Secretariat Steering Committee. So um, also we plan to at least apply 10 projects for the Milan Pact Award. So uh, I hope uh, cities will uh, find their best practices and uh, will try to prepare a good application in order to apply and share their best practices with other cities uh, of Milan Pact uh, around the globe. So these are the main uh, regional goals that we have set. Of course, uh, if uh, any city of the Milan Pact of, the, of, our, of our region is interested to host some of these events, for example, to host a regional forum, or they already have idea which projects they can uh, propose for the Milan Pact Award, we, uh, as a city that has a successful experience of uh, getting the special prize from the first uh, application, we are more than willing to help and uh, help with structuring the application and uh, to apply to the Milan Pact Award. Uh, last year, uh, the Milan Pact Award was in, on, on, in online format as uh, Milan Pact Talks. So cities around the world have sent uh, their videos uh, to the Milan Pact Secretariat. And I hope the next... Uh, Milan Pact Award will be organized in more traditional way as it used to be uh, during the first five cycles. 
and uh, of course the the winner of the and uh, receivers of special mention will be presented at the next global forum. So, uh, yeah, and that's uh, pretty much all for the leadership plan. So if uh, cities uh, that are with us here, uh, if you would like to add something, any suggestions uh, to the leadership plan, any ideas of what kind of projects you may also propose for the Milan Pact Award? Please, you I can. Think that maybe it's a, maybe it will be a good idea for uh, professionals from every city to have a webinar uh, sometimes very soon uh, to discuss it and present to to us uh, what the two three topics that uh, the professional thinks that uh, we want to deal with. Um, so uh, if if you want, uh, we can uh, even uh, uh, organize it and you know ask people you know who wants to participate in this call. Right. Thank you, Ethan. Uh, well, I think one of the topics that comes to mind is uh, again uh, school nutrition. Uh, and uh, again, with the city of Milan, we were uh, the, the, the similar project, Milan Ristorazione. We're already considering to maybe to organize a field visit. So uh, they are ve very interesting to come to Kazan to see how the Department of Food and so Social Nutrition is working. And we're also very interested to uh, visit the city of Milan. And maybe if uh, other cities would like to join this uh, field visit, I think that can also be a good idea. Good idea. Thank you. Any other comments, suggestions? Well, uh, one suggestion I also would like to propose that the, so today in the afternoon we'll have a session, a state of the pact session, when we will uh, summarize the results of the this uh, regionalization strategies, and I will be moderating that session. One thing, uh, the one challenge that we have uh, faced in uh, probably organizing the regional forum is that. Um, language barrier. So uh, many cities uh, from uh, six countries uh, and uh, Eastern Europe, like uh, Kishinev, uh, Moldova, and also some Asian cities like uh, Ulaanbaatar in uh, Mongolia, uh, they uh, sometimes may find it easier to listen and participate in Russian. So uh, I would like to propose and ask, uh, kindly ask the steering committee of Milan Pact to make uh, Russian language as one of the uh, official languages for the global forum, for instance. Of course, for regional forums, we will uh, provide uh, Russian interpretation, because also Russian language is one of the UN languages. So I think it will uh, could facilitate the participation of uh, cities from Eurasia and uh, make it easier to deliver presentations and participate at the events. So if you support this, uh, idea as well. We can uh, put it at the leadership plan and propose it to the uh, Milan Pact Secretariat. I think you have the support of the people here. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Vichlav, do you have anything to add, maybe? Some comments? Since <coughs> you are here. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. I'm really happy uh, to be here in Barcelona, and uh, uh, I really hope uh, that in the nearest future we could meet uh, uh, eye to eye and uh, see each other. And uh, so uh, I think that's a very good idea to organize uh, these site visits. Uh, I really hope uh, that uh, uh, Moscow bid uh, will be, will be support to uh, host. Uh, uh, so a big summit uh, of the Milano Food Pact uh, policy, food, uh, policy Pact um, uh, in the next year uh, will be supported um, by the steering committee and uh, uh, Moscow will have a chance uh, uh, to host uh, such a big uh, and uh, prominent event. Uh, uh, if not, uh, we are also ready to participate, uh, to be more active uh, in this work, uh, and uh, uh, maybe we could uh, organize uh, something uh, uh, for you all uh, uh, to show Moscow projects, uh, because uh, uh, we have uh, <clears throat> a lot of experience to share, uh, and uh, we are also ready to get best practices uh, from other cities, and uh, uh, we are really happy that uh, we work together with our uh, good friends and partners from Kazan City, and uh, uh, so, thank you so much, 
hope to see you next time uh, and uh, we will meet and discuss this uh, beautiful projects. Thank you. Again, thank you very much to all participants. So uh, hope to see you soon, face to face in Kazan, in Moscow, or in uh, any other place. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, sorry, just a second. Yes, uh, I have uh, announced earlier that we have 10 minutes for the presentation by uh, representative of uh, Food Trails. Alicia, please, the floor is yours. You can either from there uh, or, yes. or from here. Is this on? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, it was a lovely session. I have a questionnaire that uh, as a, I'm the cross-cutting manager of the Food Trails project. So we are developing uh, certain metrics to understand the city's relationships with food and um, uh, the, how they uh, relate with the partners that provide the food or the, the partners for the consumption of the food. And so we would like to share with the people in the room, we have a QR code. And for the people that are not in the room, we have a link. Um, are you able to share a link on the call right now? Uh, is it possible to share this? Somehow? Where? Ah, to the camera, okay. I'm not sure you will be able to access the... Uh, yes, we will need to have basically um, the participants filling in this questionnaire about how does the municipality relate directly or indirectly uh, with, for example, the food production, the agricultural land, uh, what are your needs, uh, what are you able to do right now, and what have you been doing in the last two years? because we would like to expand the methodology that we have used for food trails, that is a European funded project, to uh, each of the regions of the Milan Pact. Um, and so finding the best way to tackle these um, uh, possibilities and issues in uh, all the different regions. Uh, I think we can share the link in the chat later before we close the call or uh, via email. Uh, yeah, if you can uh, please uh, give the link to the technical. So that, uh, okay. Yeah. And then we can also, via email, we can send them. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, the Food Trails project is a project financed by uh, European Commission, the Horizon Europe project. Yes. Yes, and it's uh, supported by uh, 11 uh, European cities and uh, universities. So it's a consortium of uh, cities and universities, right? Yes, it's a consortium of cities and universities. And... Um, uh, we're working on developing living labs in these 11 cities that are part of the pact. And uh, in each of the living labs, um, trying to develop new policies uh, for, uh, for food management uh, in the cities, depending on what are the priorities of each city. And we have four main pillars that are determined by the uh, Food 2030 uh, program. And one of the pillars is uh, climate. So providing better food uh, that is safer for the climate as well. Another one is nutrition. Um, another one is the circularity. So basically avoiding all types of waste uh, in the food system or repurposing the waste in the food system. And the last one is innovation. Uh, so experimenting with new ways of uh, uh, providing food, uh, anything that